I think you know what's gonna happen in this video. Hey guys, I've got some great news today because we have a Tasmotov and Custom Coordinator firmware on Son of Zigbee Bridge Pro. Now this is one of the three devices actually Son of released, which is Son of Zigbee Bridge, Son of USB Dongle and now Son of Zigbee Bridge Pro, which I covered in this video there, which you can now flash with Tasmota and have a Custom Coordinator uh, running on it helping you to integrate this product into your DIY home automation, whether you're going to do it via MQTT, uh, home assistance or Node-RED, that's down to you. So in this video, I'm going to cover how to flash Tasmota and add custom coordinator to your Son of Zigbee Bridge Pro. <laughs> but before we get started, Remember, you are doing this at your own risk and also please do check article linked in the description of this video mostly because I recorded this video as soon as the method was available and things might change and it's easier to update that article than re-record -re entire video. So be advised, check the link and keep up to date. Alright, let's get started. I should probably start this with saying thank you to everyone involved into making it happen. So thanks so much guys and you can look it up the list of people involved in that project on GitHub. First, we need to flash Tasmota onto ESP32 inside the Son of Zigbee Bridge Pro. It will use Tasmota features to communicate with CC2652 and push custom coordinator firmware to the device. To do this you're gonna need a couple of things. Obviously Zigbee a Bridge Pro. FTD flasher, I'm going to link a couple of them in the description of this video. A soldering iron, it's going to be handy. I'm using my favorite, TS-80P, very handy, you should check it out. However, you can come up with your own optional ways of connecting DuPont wires, even without soldering, depending on how creative you're going to get. Also, you're going to need correct Tasmota 32 firmware, which I'm going to link uh, via my website, and ESP32 flash tool. First you need to get inside the device itself and locate the GPIO header. You'll notice there are five different pins exposed in there and I used a five pin header to, and solder it to the PCB. However you choose to connect your flasher to the board, it's up to you. However, follow the schema to make correct connections. Download the ESP flash tool and Tasmota32 ZigBee Pro or also NS panel uh, bin works as well. And this is the Tasmota firmware we're going to use uh, in the flash tool. Make sure that the GPL00 is connected to ground, that will uh, enable the device to uh, enter the flash mode when it's powered on, and then you can use the flash ESP utility to flash your downloaded bin file. If you have any problems at this point, make sure your hex file is correct. Unplug the device and power it via USB, or reset it again, and after a minute or two, you should see it broadcasting a Wi-Fi access point with Tasmota in the name of the access ID. Connect to it and navigate to 192.168.4.1 to enter your Wi-Fi credentials and connect the son of bridge to your Wi-Fi. You can use a router interface or an app-like thing to find the IP on the network of your new uh, device, in this case son of a bridge, and navigate to that IP address to enter Tasmota web interface. Then navigate to configuration, configure other, and use the template uh, from my article to set up your Tasmota device correctly. The device will restart and you'll have to access the interface again. To flash the custom coordinator, we need to first expand the current file system to fit all the files that we're going to uh, upload to ease ourselves into the process. So navigate to consoles and then bury scripting console and run this script from my website to upload partitionwizard.tab. Now you can alternatively download the file separately yourself and upload it to a son of Zigbee bridge using the manage file system option. If you forget to do it, and then you'll try to upload all the files that's going to be needed to flash the custom coordinator, you'll notice that the, especially the big hex file, is not uploading because there is not enough space. 
so watch out for that. When the file is present in the file system, reboot your device and it will install the script and enable the partition wizard option in the console's menu. Use that to change the FS partition size. It will likely show something like 320 when you open the menu. So increase that to 1152 and then let the script finish the job. If all went well, after the reboot you should see over 1 megabyte of space to work with. Now you'll be able to upload all files necessary to complete the job. It's very important that when actually downloading the files from GitHub, you select the raw version of the file and then use save as option to save the file. Otherwise, if you use save link as option, it will save your HTML document, which is not going to work. Use manage file system to upload all the files listed on my website so your device is ready to push the custom coordinator firmware. We are finally ready to flash coordinator firmware on Son of Zigbee Bridge Pro. Go back to consoles and bury script in console and then run the following script. This script will check the firmware and will confirm that the BSL GPIO is set to DIO 8. You should get a information confirming this within the next couple of seconds. If you get an error at this point, it means something's wrong with your hex file. You either saved it as a HTML file and it's not going to work for you, so investigate this, or perhaps check the name of the hex file that you've uploaded to your device. That should help you investigate the trouble and get past this point. You'll also receive this error if you haven't resized your uh, partition correctly and you've uploaded the file without any content with a zero bytes shown as on the picture. It's time to actually push the coordinator firmware. Now, if you get any errors at this point, it means your Tasmota version is incorrect and you should look into this. I had some problems with the Tasmota version initially and uh, I've replaced that with the version for NS Panel would work for me, but by the time this tutorial is up, that shouldn't be an issue and you should use Tasmota for Zigbee Bridge Pro. Assuming that everything worked and you were able to use CC flash command, uh, you shouldn't see any messages in here. Give it about 5 minutes before you actually exit back to main menu and check the console for the log entry, as this is how you're gonna find out if your flash has been successful. If everything looks alright, restart your device. And now you can enjoy it as motor and custom coordinator firmware on some of Zigbee Bridge Actually, there is one more thing I should really do. That's so much better. Okay, now if you want to add the devices, it's the usual. Just use the web interface to enable uh, devices to being added to your coordinator. There is a permit join uh, button to click. It will enable this option for a couple of seconds and follow the pairing instructions on your end device. So that will depend on the end device you've got, whether it's a sensor, switch, etc, etc. These devices will pop into the menu of the Tasmota and you'll be able to configure them via console. For further instructions on how to use Zigbee 2 Tasmota, I'll refer you to Tasmota documentation. Now, personally, I prefer Zigbee 2 MQTT, but that's my personal preference, and it's probably mostly because I understand it better and I've had more experience with it, but using Zigbee 2 Tasmota is absolutely fine and you'll have no problem integrating this via MQTT with whatever DIY automation system you're running at your home. And lastly, a son of Zigbee Bridge Pro is CC2652 based. It means that you can already obviously have the coordinator firmware on it, but something tells me in the future we're also gonna see router firmware, so if you have multiple devices, oops, Uh, then you can repurpose one of those devices to act as a router and place it somewhere around your house to increase the strength of the network. By the way, this firmware also comes with a Zigbee map so you can look up your mesh and see how your devices are propagated within that Zigbee mesh. Very, very useful when troubleshooting mesh networks. 
As for now guys, thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, do let me know in the comment section below or even better uh, via my social media because sometimes if you include the links, YouTube doesn't like it and suspends. I have no access to this. I do not have a posting schedule, so if you're interested what's next, uh, in a land of home automation of not enough tech, then you know how YouTube works, I'm not going to explain you that, but do follow me on any given social media, start a conversation and suggest um, topics for future videos. As for now guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye!